Welcome back folks and thanks for joining me here today on Miss Mechanic. Today we're going to talk about seven different types of fluids you can find underneath your hood. So I'm doing this series of videos to help you get to know your car a little bit better and hopefully by the end of this you'll be able to learn um, a little bit more information about your car that you didn't know before, giving you some more confidence to try a little, try a few things yourself like checking your fluids, but more so I want to arm you with some knowledge and confidence to go uh, into the garage, go see your mechanic whenever your car needs maintenance and feel comfortable about the decisions you're making when it comes to your car. So I became a licensed mechanic in 2007 um, and I did that after completing what we do in Canada which is an apprenticeship. So an apprenticeship uh, for an automotive service technician or mechanic um, involves 6,500 work hours that have to be done underneath another licensed mechanic. Um, so I worked at three different types of garages. I worked at a Chrysler dealership, I worked at a BMW dealership, and I worked at a small garage where I worked on every type of car from small car, compact cars like this, to big trucks and trucks that pulled really heavy trailers. So the first fluid I'm going to talk about today is engine oil. Um, this is your engine and oil is imperative to making sure that your engine is healthy, um, to making sure your engine runs at all in fact. So my son has offered to help me here to uh, help find a dipstick and we need to find a dipstick to measure what type of fluid. Do you remember? Oil. Oil. Where does the oil go? In the engine. In the engine. Can you find the... <gasps> Alright. Do you know how to check it, Noah? I don't know. Okay. If it's up. Thank you, Noah, for helping us find the dipstick. So here's a close-up of my clean dipstick. I've removed it, I've wiped it off, I'm ready to put it back in. And again, making sure I press all the way so I get an accurate measurement, then bringing it out again. And you can see that I am about a quarter inch below that top mark, which means I'm a little bit low on oil, so I can go ahead and fill that up. If you're not seeing any oil on the dipstick, that's a pretty uh, dire sign that your engine's in some trouble, so make sure you get some oil in her right away. So the second uh, fluid I'm going to teach you about today is actually transmission fluid. Um, but this one's a fun one for my car in particular because I don't have a way of checking my transmission fluid on this particular car. So I drive a standard car, uh, which means I have a manual transmission, so I don't have an automatic transmission, so I don't have automatic transmission fluid. Um, I do have fluid in my transmission because, again, there's gears in there, just like the engine um, in terms of lots of uh, small uh, metal moving parts. Um, but that is all checked from underneath because it's not a maintenance item like it would be in some automatic transmissions. The third fluid I'm going to teach you about today is your power steering fluid. Um, and you can see that mine is right here just in front of the washer fluid, which we're going to be talking about later. So this power steering fluid, uh, what's important about power steering fluid? Well, power steering um, is on every vehicle that I'm aware of unless you get an old hot rod or something like that. So back in the 70s, um, I think we started seeing it kind of mainstream, but definitely in the 80s, uh, almost every model had it, and um, it's just a, a fluid that goes into a rack that makes it easier to steer your car. If you didn't have power steering, and some of you out there, and let me know in the comments if you've ever experienced uh, losing your power steering fluid, you'll notice that it suddenly gets very difficult to turn, turn the steering wheel, um, and so that, that's when you're, well, sometimes it's your pump. Um, that's gone as well. doesn't matter. We're checking the fluid today. This fluid should never be low unless you've got a problem. So if you've got a small leak, um, an engine uh, bay, so this is called the engine bay of a vehicle, they can get pretty dirty. So sometimes when you're checking a fluid, you really got to give it a nice clean around to make sure you can actually properly see how much. And if you look on mine, there is a min and a max. But also on mine, there's a hot min and a max. So some of these fluids will expand as they heat up, so you have to make sure you're looking at the correct measurement. My engine is cold right now. My car's been sitting in the garage for a little bit, so I'm going to be looking for the cold mark, and you can see I'm at the max. So uh, that fluid is good. So the fourth fluid I'm going to talk about is your windshield washer fluid. I did a post on this about two weeks ago on Instagram, so if you're interested in hearing a little bit more or seeing it in written format, please check out my Instagram channel. Um, so your washer fluid will have a cap that shows you to wash your fluid. A uh, washer fluid tends to be in a plastic bottle. I don't know that I've ever seen it in anything that wasn't plastic. So my washer fluid, if I go ahead and lift up my washer fluid cap, something I want you to pay attention to is you've got something uh, that's like a strainer inside your washer fluid. That's to make sure that uh, 
when you're filling the fluid, you don't accidentally send uh, some debris in there or something that could potentially clog up your nozzles. Um, for more information or a little bit kind of guided photos on that, check out the Instagram post. Don't do that. Um, but if it does fall, you can always clean it and put it back. Um, so that's where your washer fluid goes. In the winter time, you'll have to be careful about uh, types of washer fluid, especially if you're in uh, Canada. Like I am, you'll want to make sure that the washer fluid you're using doesn't freeze. The fifth fluid I'm going to talk about today is your uh, radiator fluid or your coolant. Um, so this one is uh, pretty key. So what's important about your rad fluid or your coolant is that it's what keeps your engine cool. Uh, your engine gets really, really hot. Uh, what happens inside there is a really a series of small uh, explosions. Um, and they create a lot of heat, a lot of power. Um, but with that heat, you have to remove a certain amount so that nothing or so that your components don't melt. So in my vehicle and in many vehicles, there's two places to check uh, your coolant. So this one, your metal cap will be uh, a part of your radiator. What you have to be really careful of is this uh, metal cap indicates that there's a high pressure in here. And sometimes um, it, this might be easy to see and sometimes not. My engine is cold, so I'm okay to release this cap, uh, but this cap actually, so if I turn it uh, left, it has a lock on it, like a secondary lock, so it won't come up right away. Um, and if there was pressure behind there, you'd actually see a bunch of coolant bubbling out, um, but because my uh, engine's cold, nothing's coming out. So that's what I was talking about, about those locks. Uh, so that's one area that you can check, and sometimes you can only check the one space. In my vehicle, however, um, I can go ahead and check the coolant just at the, what we call the reservoir instead of the rad. Um, just for those of you who don't know, the radiator is this piece at the front of your vehicle. Sorry, it's, it's aligned. This one's actually for your air conditioning, but it doesn't matter. It looks very similar. Um, it's a heat exchanger and uh, it's really important because that coolant goes through that loop and the coolant has to cool down so it can continue cooling your engine. I put the radiator cap back on. Um, make sure it's tight, otherwise you will bubble over, that coolant will boil um, and uh, cause you some issues and some smell. So this is uh, my reservoir. So your reservoirs for your coolant are most often plastic um, and should be relatively easy to check. I need a light on the side, um, but I can see on the side you've got a full mark. And again, with the power steering fluid, this, this will make a difference whether the engine's hot or cold. You'll have a hot max and a hot min, and a cold max and a cold min. Um, another key thing about checking your fluid level or your uh, coolant level, if you are refilling your coolant, make sure, make sure you use the one recommended by your uh, vehicle manufacturer. So you can look in your owner's manual. Um, but certain types of coolants in certain types of vehicles will gum up. What happens is um, they're incompatible with some of the metal components inside the engine um, and they can cause a lot of issues and cause some damage, um, expensive damage that you don't want to have to deal with. So, moving on from coolant. So the sixth fluid I'm going to talk about today is your brake fluid. And your brake fluid can most often be found right by your driver's side, uh, like right by your steering wheel. Um, there's a reason for this because that's where your brake pedal is. Uh, your brake fluid is imperative to the way your brakes operate. If you don't have fluid, uh, you simply don't have brakes. Um, I talked about that in my video about servicing your brakes and, and that piston and how it goes out. Um, this, it doesn't matter whether it's hot or cold, you can check this at any time. You usually don't need to take the cap off to check it. Um, you can clean it off on the side and have a look. Use a light to make sure. Uh, with brake fluid, if you're low on brake fluid, it can be an indication that you're actually um, low on your brakes. So keep an eye on it. It can be, uh, as, as your pads wear out, that fluid is used uh, more and more downstream. Um, so it's there. If, if you're really low on fluid, it means mean you have a leak. You'll notice that with a soft pedal as well. So the seventh and final fluid I'm going to teach you about is actually the category of other fluids. Um, so fluids that are common on some vehicles and not so common on others. Uh, for example, my battery actually takes fluid. So it's a serviceable battery, but many batteries out in the market are no longer serviceable. I know mine's serviceable because these caps actually come up and I can check how much water's in there. So another type of fluid that would fall under the category of other would be differential fluid. Um, so if my vehicle was a big pickup truck, 
Uh, with four-wheel drive, for example, I'd have a rear differential and you'd actually have to be up underneath that vehicle to check that fluid. And for some of those four-wheel drive vehicles, they'll have a separate transfer case. Um, and a transfer case would, you'd have to go up underneath the vehicle to check that fluid as well. Um, and the other kind of most common other fluid would be uh, rear washer fluid um, and sometimes headlight washer. So thanks for joining me today on this mechanic. If you like this video, I encourage you to like it. Um, please subscribe to my channel and uh, keep in touch with me so that you let me know what kinds of things you want to learn about your car.